Back to basics using the portrait tools. In this video, I'm going to show you the portrait tools. This is the final of the Back to Basics videos. But for this one, I'm going to extend the edit slightly and take it into using other tools but still restricted within the software. I'm not going to use a sky that I have taken. I'm going to use one of the skies that comes with the software to add a background. And as you'll see, it's a pure white background. The reason I'm doing this as well is because of a couple of comments in the past have asked about replacing backgrounds on a white background. So I thought I would just try it for this video as well. That's the first time I've edited this image uh, using these backgrounds. So it was good to see if it worked or not. And as I'm recording this, after I've edited, I know it did work. So without further ado, let's dive right in. Okay, that's us now in the portrait tools. And the first thing we're going to do, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit just to show you how this works. Right, AI Skin Enhancer. If I click AI Skin Defects Removal, as you can see there, there's very, very little defects, if any, on the skin at all. And you shouldn't see much of a change with this. If I go before and after straight away, you can see a slight softening, but that is it. There's nothing there. So what I'm going to do is I am going to push the amount here. And I'll keep going to around there. You want to leave texture in the skin. Plastic skin doesn't look good, so you want to leave texture in the skin. Next, I'm going to get into the Portrait Enhancer, and this is where the tools, we'll be using a few of these for this. The Face Light will do what it says in the tin and lighten the face. I'm going to take the Face Light in just slightly, not too much at all. Red eye removal, I don't have to worry about. Eye whitening, you have to be very careful with this. I'm just going to lift that slightly. Eye enhancer will sharpen the eyes. Again, you want to be careful. As I've said before, be subtle with your edits for this kind of thing. As well as landscapes, portraits are the same. So I'm going to take that in to around there. Dark circles removal, we'll push that as well. There's hardly any here, if any, but we'll push that. And then I'll show you the before and after. So you can see with a few sliders being adjusted, how much it makes a difference. The next thing, slim face and large eyes. Well, I don't need to enlarge these eyes. And I don't need to slim this face down. Eyebrow improve. The eyebrows are very sharp, but I'll use it anyway. But again, subtly. It's around there. Lip saturation, redness, darkening, teeth whitening. I'm only going to darken the lips here just for this image. I, I'm not going to use the saturation at all or the redness. I'm just going to darken them and again subtly. So I'll show you the before and after. And it is subtle differences. Next we have the high key. I could use that, but I don't want to. Last but not least with the portrait tools is the Orton effect. And I'm just going to push that again slightly to around there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it back on the eyes. So I'm going to use the brush and I'm going to go erase. I'm going to take the brush size down. I'll just do it here so that you can see to around there. And I'm just going to paint once over that eye. Because originally we were given the eye definition. And then with the Orton effect, we're giving it that slight subtle softness. I don't want that within the eyes. I'm also going to paint over the lips and the nostrils. So if I show you the mask, that's what we have just now. Right, I'm going to click that. And I'm going to zoom back out by using Command and Zero or Control and Zero on a PC. So that's the image there. I'm really happy with that. And that's just by using the portrait tools. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to extend this ever so slightly to give you an entirely different view and effect. You can see that this is a pure white background. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to stamp the layer. Right, now that we've got the stamped layer, and there is a reason for me creating a stamped layer, it's for the next 
adjustments that I do, if I don't like them, I can delete the entire layer instead of just resetting them. So first thing I am going to do in the stamp layer is I am going to go into the AI Enhance and I'm going to push the accent, AI accent for this. What that's doing, we've added subtle effects. I'm now trying to sharpen slightly and as it reads as a global edit and it reads a full image, it will make a difference. Then I'm going to get into AI structure and again, this is just tiny adjustments to put there. And if I go before, after, before, after, you can see it there. Next thing, as we're doing a creative edit, but starting off with the portrait tools, I'm going to add a sky to this, but I'm going to keep it within the constraints of the software and any free skies that come with the software for this one. So I'm going to get into AI sky replacement and pure white background as you see, sky selection, I'll just go for blue sky 4, there you go. As you notice it puts a subtle blue cast over the image here, I'm going to remove that just by pulling back real light scene. So that's that pulled back now. The next thing I'm going to do is going to get into advanced settings. First of all, I'll pull back horizon blending, then horizon position. You can see there's a couple of bits still down here. I'll push the sky global and then I'll close the gaps. Then I'll take the sky local and I'll push that slightly. Push that to about there. And I'm quite happy with that. Next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to defocus this sky. I'll take it to around there just to see how quickly that does it. So we now have that completely different image, completely different looking image, but creative edit. I'm now going to add some atmospheric haze to the entire image. So I'll push that to about there. Possibly too light to about there. I'm then going to play with the temperature to around about there. And I'm quite happy with that so far. And that's using everything within the software. I have not stepped out of the software or added my own sky. Now I'm going to get into the colour. And I am going to go into the blue, because I'm not the biggest fan of blues in images, depending on how it looks, if it suits the image. And then I'm going to pull back the luminance of it as well. And for me, that's looking good just now. Last but not least, I'm going to get into the black and white conversion, just for this image, and convert to black and white. So, I am quite happy with that. What I'm now going to do is go into light. And I'm going to push the smart contrast slightly to around there. Lift the shadows. And then we may just add a vignette. And there we have it. So there's the before. Colour, full colour image. There's the after just with a few steps in Luminar. Hopefully you found that useful and hopefully the fact that I took the portrait tools palette even further and then went back into the light tools and used the AI accent and AI structure and then went on to add a sky replacement and hopefully it built up and gave you something else to think about when you're shooting and perhaps when you're doing your studio shoots as well. White background I found works great for this image. I've also found in the past a grey background works best. I've tried green and I've tried blue and I haven't had the same results but that was just for me when I was shooting. It doesn't mean it won't work with different colours. I just think that the colour information when the software is looking to replace a background with a sky or any kind of background, if it reads too much colour information or information in the digital side of it, the binary side of it, it may not add it the same. So for me, the blue didn't work, the green didn't work. Tune in for the next video, which is going back to compositing with Luminar 4.1. Hopefully you enjoyed that video and big thumbs up if you did. If you want to see more videos on the channel, please check them out below and consider subscribing because that would be absolutely fantastic. And if you want to know when the videos are coming out, hit the notification bell as well. Thanks again for watching.